Well, good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to uh, the rectory dining room, where I will be celebrating uh, Eucharist this morning um, with you in your homes. So, from um, my home here to yours, uh, I wish you joy and peace uh, this Sunday morning. I don't know what your weeks have been like. Um, this is one of the strangest weeks I think that I have ever lived through. Um, but time and again I find myself returning to God and holding all of the people that I would usually see um, before him. And so this morning that's all of you and um, I'm just missing you and um, being very pleased at the ways we've been able to connect online. But just holding you all in my prayers. And perhaps as we uh, gather in our own homes in a dispersed way this morning, we can hold each other in, uh, in our prayers and before God. So I wonder if you can still yourselves where you are, uh, light a candle um, if you have one nearby and it's safe to do so. Here's the candle I uh, lit earlier for you. Um, I'm a very long way from the candles behind me, so um, there's not going to be any, uh, any incidents involving fire, I hope. But maybe you can still yourselves wherever you are. The advantage of being at home is, of course, you can have a cup of tea in your hand um, uh, throughout the service, as well as uh, looking forward to something afterwards. So let's still ourselves where we are, and knowing that God is with us uh, wherever we are, and that we are held together in his love. posted the service sheet uh, on the website and also it came out with today's with that Friday's email so um, if you have that in front of you you'll be able to follow what we're doing today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and trust shall be your strength. Now throughout Lent we place symbols of Christ's passion at the cross and uh, earlier this morning I posted a photograph of the Lent cross at St Michael's with today's symbol added a few days ago. A few days ago I managed to fast forward in time and take some photographs so uh, that we can continue with this discipline. So today uh, we place the whip by the cross. We bring to the cross a whip and re remember the violence with which Jesus was treated during his trials and at the crucifixion. We remember how he accepted the violence without retaliation and on the cross prayed forgiveness for those who abused him. Jesus, you told your followers to love their enemies and pray for those who ill-treat them. We pray for all who face violence through war, persecution or abuse. Help us to challenge injustice and to work for peace and reconciliation in our own families and communities. And as we come before God, we can become aware of our own shortcomings and regrets. So we confess our sins to you, almighty God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith.
If you're able to, would you like to join with me in the words in bold? Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us. And restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've chosen two of the readings for us uh, to think about uh, today, and uh, you'll find them on the news sheet that was set out. If you'd like to find them in your Bibles, the first one is Ezekiel 37, beginning at verse 1. And then our Gospel reading is really long this morning. It's John 11, beginning at verse 1. So from the prophecy of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out, of, out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with sin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We're cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and will act, says the Lord. The Gospel reading from John's Gospel in chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. Now a certain man was ill 
Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, and her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you're going there again. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. <clears throat> Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could he who opened the eyes of the blind man not have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, 
Lord, already there's a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. So I can't hear the passage from Ezekiel without hearing in my head the song we used to sing at school. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones, and the hip bone connected to the leg bone, and the leg bone connected to the knee bone. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. But Ezekiel gives us such a vivid picture of his vision with God that I am, as I imagine the scene, the song starts going around in my head. And I'm happy to share that with you this morning. But the scene is actually pretty grisly. A mass grave. Very many dry bones in this valley. And in the vision, God asks the prophet a question. Can these bones live? And the prophet, the prophet simply says, God, only you know. Faced with a vision of utter despair and with the reality of death all around him, the prophet turns to God and says, it's only you, Lord, that can do anything about this. And then the prophet sees a display of God's power as the bones come together and live again. A vast multitude, we're told, representing the people of Israel restored to God and to their home full of the Spirit of God. The prophet trusted that only God could bring new life from this place of death and saw the power of the Spirit do exactly that. Our Gospel reading too is all about life from death. Again, it doesn't deny the reality of death Instead of bones, we have stinking flesh and grief and anger in the mourners, including Jesus. Jesus weeps for his friend. Mary and Martha are angry with Jesus for not having been there sooner and healing their brother. Such a realistic picture of human life after the death of someone beloved. Martha expresses her faith in Jesus as the Messiah, that even as he claims to be the resurrection and the life, there is little recognition of what Jesus might be capable of doing at that moment. Everyone assumed, and who can blame them, that death was the end for Lazarus, that they would never see him in this life again. They did not have faith that Jesus would be able to do anything, that there would be new life in the Holy Spirit for Lazarus. But you see, the raising of Lazarus did not depend on the faith of the mourners. Jesus, closely united with the Father, was able to bring life where previously there was only death. Now usually these passages given to us the week before we head into Holy Week, we hear again the story of how Jesus himself died, was buried and rose again that first Easter. And they help us to prepare for walking the way of the cross with hope. And this year, 
Well, it's still our task to do that. But as a meme I saw on the internet recently says, this is the lentiest Lent I have ever Lented. And it might feel like an extended Lent or Passion Tide this year. A Lent or Passion Tide that goes on even after we have proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus two weeks today. But what I've come to see about these passages this week is that there's room for all of us in this journey. Sometimes we might be the prophet who sees only the reality of death around him, but nonetheless turns to God and says, you know that you have the power to bring life. And then stands back and watches as God does exactly that. Other times we might be like Martha, wanting to believe but not really seeing the evidence of what God is capable of doing. Other times we might be quite angry with Jesus too at what we see around us. Sometimes we will doubt that he can do anything at all and sometimes we will be all of those people in the same day and actually in the same hour. And there are other times when we will, like those who were witnesses to what Jesus did with Lazarus, we will believe in him and know his power even over death. So what to do? Well, I think it's really important for all of our well-being, of our mental and spiritual health, that we acknowledge all of those feelings in us to God, whatever they may be. When we're able to praise, let's praise. When you need to lament, weep. When you need to be angry, rage. When you need to doubt, do just that. Jesus has heard and felt human anguish. And thank goodness, his power to bring life from death does not depend on the state of our faith. That is the truth we need to hold on to, even as we rage, doubt, weep and praise. Jesus is with us in all of that and his power to bring life where previously we saw only death is the same as ever. So as we continue to Lent, this very Lenty Lent, and move closer to the cross, it's my prayer for all of us that we take to God all that we might be feeling, but rely on what it is that we know, the power of Jesus to bring life once more. Amen. So relying on what it is that we know and what the church has said about Jesus for a very long time. I invite you to join with me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let's pray together, even though we are apart, for God's world and for God's church. Please do continue to send in your requests for prayer. Uh, to the office or to me, and we um, will uh, remember them in our prayers each week. So let us pray to the Lord who is our refuge and stronghold. For the health and the well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship, where all are known and cared for. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in a few moments of silence, I invite you to name before God those for whom you would particularly wish to pray this morning. So we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us, accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. attitude. I wonder if um, at this moment in the service when we would usually exchange peace with our neighbours, if you could simply hold those people uh, that you would usually exchange a uh, sign of peace with uh, before God in prayer and pray God's blessing on them. As I say, peace be with you all in all of your homes. The peace of the Lord be always with to prepare for communion. So here, in a, as a dispersed community, we continue to share with one another in prayer and spiritually to receive what God gives us. I will uh, receive on behalf of all of you, but I pray that you would also receive from God this morning. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them 
to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, it come to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share in this bread and this cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Let me offer you God's blessing wherever you are.
Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. wouldn't be a church service without notices. So I'd like to say I'll be posting shortly on Facebook and on the website uh, a reflection uh, on today's gospel reading written and recorded by Georgia Condell, our placement student. I really do commend that to you. It's a good piece of work. So if you have leisure this afternoon, then please do have a look at that. We continue to offer morning prayer and night prayer. Morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays at nine o'clock in the morning. And night prayer every evening, Monday to Friday at 9 p.m. Uh, so please do feel free to join us here um, for any of um, those uh, uh, offices, those acts of worship. And an advance notice for next week is Palm Sunday next week, and we're not going to be able to have uh, palm crosses blessed in the usual way. But I was thinking uh, yesterday that um, those who were with Jesus on that first Palm Sunday just cut down the nearest branches that they had and strew them in his path. And so I wondered, if during the week you might be able to fashion your own cross from whatever you find in your garden um, uh, or, um, well, maybe not a neighbour's garden, but uh, or um, somewhere nearby. Is there something that you can use um, as a palm cross that we can bless together? Because as I say, Jesus' first disciples, that crowd, just used whatever was closest to hand. In their case, it was palms. Uh, I wonder what it will be in our cases. And feel free to post pictures of your creation on our Facebook page so that we can all share with what you are doing. So may God bless you and your families um, in your homes. Please um, do continue to be in touch with uh, anything that you need, any prayer requests, any practical help. Um, the Basics Bank is still open for donations. There's a box outside the parish office and outside on the rectory doorstep and also behind All Saints Church. So please feel free to leave donations there. I'll be taking them down to uh, the depot early next week. Please look after yourselves and each other and God bless you all.